Alright, so today we are going to be making a Hyperlite Drifter style health bar. Before we begin, I want to point out what I've set up here already. So I have a Kinematic Body 2D with a sprite. You'll notice that the sprite is actually centered with the Kinematic Body 2D. Since we'll be positioning the health bar dynamically, it's important to note that my sprite has been offset so that the center of the Kinematic Body is at the bottom of the feet of the sprite. The second thing to mention is that I have prepared a chunk uh, PNG here and this is actually just a small square which is two pixels tall two pixels wide and this is what we'll be using to make the actual chunks that are inside the health bar okay so now that we have what we need to get started let's add the nodes to the kinematic body 2d so let's click on the kinematic body click on the plus to add a new node and the first node we need is a new panel uh, node this will be the background of our health bar and then inside the panel we'll add a horizontal box container and now this container will lay out any items that we put inside of it onto a row. And this is useful because that's how the health bars in Hyperlite are made. And then inside the panel, we're going to add a timer, a timer node. And this will help us to show the health bar and then use a timer to determine when we want to hide the health bar as well. So let's rename our nodes that we put here. The first one we'll call health bar. We'll name the horizontal box container to be chunks because this is where we'll actually be storing the chunks. And timer can we can leave that there for the health bar let's give it a custom style so we can go down to custom styles here click on empty change that to a new style box flat then click on edit over here and we can change the background color to a nice dark purple uh, just looking at hyperlight drifter this is what it looks like to me is a dark a deep dark purple for the box and they're going to add a border width to it so it just has a one pixel wide border on each side to click on the border and change that to a, a nice hot pink looks good okay let's go to chunks and we want to make sure that it has some separation between each item we want to give a one pixel separation for each of these and then we, we also want to position the chunks as well because if we don't position this it'll just be in the corner on top of the border so we'll give two two here uh, to give to position the chunks properly and then for the timer, we can change the wait time to about three seconds and we change the one shot to on. So let's save that. And now we can actually create the chunk itself. So let's add a new scene over here and add a node. This node will be a texture rect. So you can type in text and you'll see at the bottom it says texture rect. Click create and we can drag our chunk PNG to the texture inside the expector. We can change this to chunk because this is just a uh, each chunk of health of the health bar you can save this as a chunk scene click save and we can we can close that awesome so we have all the nodes set up so now we can try adding a bit of code so let's go to our kinematic body 2d and attach a script I've already added a script to it because I wanted to have some inputs here that I can use to actually show the health bar in action but the first thing we need is to set up how much health we want the character to have so we can type in const so this is the maximum health that the character will have and then we can store the health bar in a variable to make it easier to use later type in health bar then health bar awesome now so let's set up the actual health bar itself let's click on health bar and attach a script to it you can click create and we need to store some of the nodes inside variables so let's store the health bar itself oh, well, i'll name it chunks actually so we'll grab the chunks over here and then we'll grab the actual chunk itself and we're going to preload whoops preload the chunk scene that we made earlier so chunk.tscn and then also get the timer as a variable two. and now we need to grab the health uh, the maximum health from the kinematic body 2d into our health bar so we're going to create our own custom ready function just type in ready with no underscore here and then we're going to pass in the health and so we'll be passing in this this variable over here which is the health max which will be five and with it, which is the health that will be passing to our ready function inside the health bar uh, this system will make it so that we can actually just type in any number of health and this will automatically center and position the health bar for any enemy type that we give it so since this script is attached to the actual panel itself we can just type in rect underscore size dot x and so what we want to do is we want to grab the number of chunks that we have so we can type in health and we can multiply this by three 
And now what this does is we're taking the number of chunks that we have and we're going to multiply it by first the width of the chunk. So we know that it's two pixels wide and then we're also going to add a space to it. So it's two plus one equals to three. And this will give us the length of the chunks and also the space in between the chunks and then one pixel extra. And so then all we have to do is add three and this will give us the whole width of the health bar that we need. And then we can type in rect underscore size dot y to change the height of the health bar. And this one's pretty simple. We know that chunk is two pixels tall and there's two pixels of padding on either side. So two plus two plus two is six. And then now let's properly position the health bar. We can do rect underscore score position dot x. So we can take the, the width and then we're going to divide it by two. So we'll take this divided by two. And if you minus that from the position, this will help you center uh, it on the X axis. And then let's position it on the Y axis over here. And this one is pretty simple. We're just going to put it four pixels down from where, from the center of the kinematic body. And then now we're going to need a loop to add the actual chunks to the health bar. So we can create a variable to store the chunk uh, inside letter C, for example. We're going to instance the chunk, which is the preloaded scene we added earlier. Do chunk.instance over here. We're going to take our chunks and add a child. And the child will be C, which is the chunk instance that we made just now. And that's it. So this is the health bar being set up. And so we, although we set up the function, we haven't actually called it yet. So let's go back to our kinematic body 2D script and inside the ready function, we can actually call the health bar, health bar dot ready. And we can pass in the health of the creature of the character, hit save. And if we try running this, we should see that the health bar is, pos is positioned properly and it appears and looks dope and it has the right amount of health, which is five. So although it looks great and it works and it's sh showing you the health bar, the problem is that it's showing you up front. We want the health bar to be hidden first and then we, it will show itself whenever we ping the health bar or damage the creature. So let's do that now. So hiding it is pretty simple. All we have to do is go back to our, our ready function. And then since this is on the health bar, we can just type in hide. Let's now make a ping function so that we can show the health bar whenever we need to. So let's type in func ping. And this will help us show the health bar when we need. So we can type in show. But whenever we show the health bar, we want it to automatically time out by, himself, by itself. Also, you can type in timer start. Now that we have started the timer, we want to connect it to our health bar. So we can click on the timer here, then click on node, and you'll see the timeout signal over here. Click on timeout and then connect. And then you can click on our health bar here and click connect. And you'll see that this is the function that's run whenever the timer finishes. So here we can replace this with the hide function again. And that's set up. So I'm going to go back to my kinematic body 2D. So whenever I press the ping button, it will grab the health bar and run the ping function that we made. So if I save this and I try running this, you'll see that the health bar is hidden at first. But if I press ping, you'll see that it brings the health bar up. And after a few seconds, it should hide again. There we go. Awesome. So that works properly. So let's go back to our health bar script over here and let's add a signal. So we know that we want the character to take damage and we also want it so that when the character eventually gets to zero health, it will queue free so that we can remove the character from the game. So let's create a signal that we can connect to our kinematic body 2D. So I'm going to call this signal, uh, let's say health depleted. And then let's create a function called reduce health. So whenever you're taking damage, we're technically having your health reduced and we need to pass in the amount of damage we're going to do. So let's type in damage here for the variables. In Hyperlight, whenever a character takes damage, it's going to show the health bar. So we can actually reuse our ping function that we made earlier and ping the health bar whenever it takes damage. So we need to know how much health we currently have. So we can type in var health current. So this is the amount of health that we have currently. We can type in chunks dot get children. And then we can type in var health new because we need to know how much health that we're going to have after we take damage. So we can grab the number of chunks that we have currently. So we can go type in health current dot size and then minus the damage that we pass in. So minus damage. So then we can plug this into a for loop here. 
So you can type in four i in range. So we need to pass a current number of health, which is health underscore current dot size. And then the amount of health that we should have afterwards. And we're going to add a minus one over here because we're going to be working backwards from the right. So although we have the right points of health here, arrays start from zero, whereas our health bar starts from one. So we have to actually minus one from each of these values to actually get to the correct array index. And from there on, we can actually remove the chunks. So each time we take damage, we want to double check whether or not we're actually past zero health. Because if you try to queue free a chunk that doesn't exist, then it's going to crash your game. So we have to make sure that we still have health left before we try to minus health from our health bar. So if the index is at zero, which is the last piece of health, or above that, we can queue free. So we can type in health underscore current, get the index, queue free this. And then every time we take damage, we want to see if the character is at zero health or less. So you can type in if i is less than or equal to zero after doing the damage. If it's at zero or less, it means that the character has died. So we can type in emit signal and we typed in health depleted before and that's the reduce health function. Then we can connect this part to our kinematic body. We can go back here and open up the script and we can go to here and type in reduce health and we can pass in the number that we want. So we can pass in one, for example, and higher numbers will work, but we'll do it with one first. And let's go back and connect our health depleted signal. So you can see here, if you click on health bar and then click on node, you'll see that we have our custom signal appear here. So you can click on health depleted and connect this to our kinematic body 2D script. So once we have the health bar depleted, we can replace this and type in Q free there to delete the character. And so yeah, that should be it. So we save this and try running it. We can ping again to see how much health we, he has. I'll, I'll let it fade away. I can press Q to damage it. And you'll see that he actually takes one point of damage and it shows you the health bar when he takes damage. You press it again, and you'll see that he takes damage. It shows the health bar, press it again, press it again. You'll see that he's on his last piece of health. So you press Q again, he takes damage and he dies. Awesome. So let's actually try showing you what it looks like with two. So this will work with higher points of damage as well. So if I show you, he's at five health, then press damage. He'll take two points of damage again. Now we should die here because he has only one health and we're doing two damage. And there you go. Awesome. So it works and it scales scales really well. So you can, let's say, type in a big number like 25. And let's type in a really big number here like 10. So I'll show you the health bar. Wow, he has a lot, he has a lot of health, but we can do damage too. So we press Q here. Boom. Chunks of health. Gone. Boom. Boom. Dead. Awesome. So that's how to make a health bar in Hyperlight Drifter style in Godot. Thanks for watching, guys. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. But in the meantime, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.